Let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. It's good to see all your lovely faces. Y'all look good in here. I try. I try. Dusted off some old little rigs. I be seeing y'all like, man, I need to dress better. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, we're going to first start off by reading verses 21 through 24. Oh, not only that, brothers, 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 let me hear you. Make some noise, brothers. Yeah, so our transform men is back April 11th. Stand up, Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike is our new men's life director. Amen. And so we are excited. We are talking about the Sansom Syndrome. And it's going to be some good conversation. We were talking about it over Thursday. And um, brothers, I'm telling y'all, it ain't one of those type of things where you, I'm telling you, it's real talk, real men coming together. And if you've been to the last one, we have some real good conversation around the word and not just the word, but life in general. Amen. So it's gonna be it's gonna be real good. It's not like a Bible study you just sit and get lectured to. It's not that. So if you come with that mindset, trust me, you gonna have a rude awakening because it's not that. There's some teaching there, but it's more so brothers learning from each other. And of course, the Glory Girls is this week too. <laughs> and the Bible records. <laughs> Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him and he was by the sea. Verse 22. Verse 22. If it gets there for us, but I can get there. There we go. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Verse 23. And begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. Verse 24. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him, meaning that they just came up on them they they are they like they 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 almost like ambushed him that's what it's saying now let's skip all the way down to verse 34 verse 34 says and he said to her daughter your faith has made you well this is the woman with the issue of blood who he's speaking to but i'm not going into full detail about this so that's why i skipped us down go in peace and be healed of your affliction while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Verse 37 says, and he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept well loudly. Verse 39 says, when he came in, he said to them, why make the commotion and weep? This child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered where the child was lying. Verse 41, then he took the child by hand and said to her, Talith, Talitha, come I, which is translated little girl, I say to you, arise. Verse 42, I'm going to stop here. Immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years old, I mean 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. I want to talk to you with all of this reading from the subject entitled The Tension Behind the Miracle. The Tension Behind the Miracle. 
I don't know if you've been here, but as I explain it, you're probably going to see what I'm talking about in a second. Amen. Now, let's talk about tension for a second. Put it on the cover for me, um, Deb. Not yet. I have to build them to that first point. All right. So let's deal with the first thing here. Tension. I want to use tension from the Merriam-Webster dictionary in the verb sense of tension. It is to subject to tension. It is especially to tighten to a desired or appropriate degree. I want you to hear this. Using tension as a verb, it is to tighten to a desired or appropriate degree. In our text today, you are going to see the tension of the faith of a synagogue leader named Jairus in our text today. It is in this text that you're going to see how Jesus uses his situation and the tension of it to bring his faith to an appropriate degree in this lesson. Jairus, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the rulers of the synagogue. That means he's in charge of the spiritual and business practices that are going on in the synagogue, almost like a church. He's like a pastor in the synagogue. He's one of the rulers. Now, what is so interesting that we talk about this man, Jairus, and that he's one of the synagogue rulers, because we come to find out the most synagogue leaders in Jesus' day hated him. They hated him. But Jairus, ladies and gentlemen, has a problem. And his problem leads him to seek someone he believes that can solve his problem, despite what others think of this individual. When you have something that is urgent and critical, you don't really care about who don't like who, you just want it solved. You get what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, the rulers of Jesus' day couldn't stand him because of the teaching that he was teaching, because of the authority that he walked in, and because of the claims he made to be God. They couldn't stand him. He was messing up business for some. And because of that, he was, they were not trying to get with anything. They liked to keep him away as much as possible. But out of your desperation... You will seek anything and anyone for you to get your need filled. Thankfully, Jairus had enough sense to seek the one that could change his situation. And so what he does is that when Jesus crosses over from the Gentile region, after healing a man that was possessed with legion of demons, he comes back on the other side, uh, uh, on the other side, and Jairus, in humility, gets on his knees and starts to say, help me, because my daughter is at the point of death. Ladies and gentlemen, his daughter was knocking on death's door. It could be any minute now. It's almost like she was in a hospice type of situation, whereas though at any minute, we waiting for her to hit heaven's gates. And Jairus says, if you come with me, my daughter could get healed. I'm believing that my daughter can get healed if you come with me right now. Now, this is different because we had another situation in scripture from a, a, a centurion who said, hey, I don't need you to come. Just send the word. Right. But does that mean that his faith was greater than Jairus? No, it's just at that point he believed God that, hey, he could send a word. What I like about Jesus is Jesus meets you at your point of need. He meets you at your point of faith. See, you think that you need to have the faith of someone. Jesus said, no, just have the faith of what you got, and I'll meet you at the faith that you got. If you got a little size of a mustard seed, that's enough. I'll meet you at that point of faith. And so what I like about Jesus is that he don't hold that against him. He goes along with him. But then now, Deb, now you can follow me to the first point. Because I'm going to explain the text in my points. Are you ready? Go to this. Yeah, there we go. That first point for again. I want you to write this down. 
The tension behind the miracle arises when I become impatient, feeling that Jesus is slow or delaying in providing what I urgently need. Have you ever been there? Yes, sir. Have you ever been to a place, ladies and gentlemen, where now Jesus is on the way with Jairus to his house? There's a large crowd that has ambushed him on the way to Jairus' house, ladies and gentlemen. And this woman out of nowhere who shouldn't even be out there in the streets because she is ceremonially unclean. Who've been struggling for 12 years. The doctors then took her money. She don't got no more money. She decided in herself that if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I would be made well. So she, out of her desperation, comes to Jesus because the tension that she's going through behind the miracle is, is this, that are you willing to come to him no matter how you look in front of other people just so that you can get saved? The tension is, do I let this moment pass me by and stay bleeding out or do I allow myself to go in him in faith and to touch the hem of his garment and be made whole? So she had a different tension than Jairus. And so what happens is, ladies and gentlemen, she touches the hem of his garment. And Jesus, instead of keeping on walking, everything's good. We just walking together. Yes, come on, we getting. Jesus automatically stops. Wait a second. How are you touching everybody else's need, but you're de delaying minds? How can you touch this person's need? They're not even as saved as I am. Has anybody been there? I know you don't want to talk about it, but it's the truth. I know you don't want to really talk about yourself, but I talk about me. There's times where I needed Jesus right away, and I feel like everybody else is getting healed, and I'm the person I'm praying for. You look like you're delaying on that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you ever been in that tension, ladies and gentlemen, where it seemed like Jesus is slow or delaying what you know, like, hey, I need this bill met. And if you don't come through, I don't know what I'm going to do. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? This is real life that you and I face. It is the tension of our faith that everybody goes through. The reason why some people walk away is because they can't handle the tension that comes with faith. The tension is what do you do in the in-between when you don't know, when you believe God, but you don't know if you really believe. What do you do, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in the in-between not knowing like, yo, know, like, what are you really going to do here? It's like I'm in the, and I'm like, it's like my mind is playing it's just one day I believe, the next day I don't, and it's just I'm unstable in all of my ways, like James says. I'm just going to and fro with the wind, and I don't really know what's going on. And this man got the nerve to stop. If I'm Jairus, now that I have a son, I understand this text a little bit more. Come on, come on, come on. Because if BJ was in that state, all right, somebody touch you. Everybody been touching you. Let's keep on going, brother. Let's keep it moving. BJ needs the healing. That's it, that's it, that's it. But we don't see anything that J.R. said anything when he stopped. We don't, say, we don't see anything that when he stopped, we don't know what was going through the mind of J.R. Only for us to put ourselves in his shoes and to imagine what was going through his mind. The emotions that he was going through. He needed Jesus urgently. Because guess what? His faith was that if I can get to Jesus while she's still alive, he can, she could get healed. And it looks like he's delaying. He's taking his time. He's allowing this woman and speaking to her and telling her, oh, my God, who touched me? Why are you trying to figure this out? There's a bunch of people around you talking about who touched you. Come on, man. We'll figure that out later. You, Jesus, you all know, and you know who touched you, man. You already know who touched you. Come on and, and do another touch. You already know what you're doing. 
I need you to come along. No matter how much you prick and prick and all of that stuff like that, Jesus is not moving. Who touched me? A woman. Your faith has made you well. He starts speaking to the woman and encouraging her. Hey, man, I need the encouragement. Hurry up. I need, I, hey, the pastor gave her a prophetic word. I can't, I need one. Where's mine? <laughs> you feel me? You know, like, come on, man. That's why I came to church this Sunday. I even got here on time. Help me. Like Kevin Hart, help me, please. Are you trying to figure out what is going on? Go to James chapter 1. Here's what's happening. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Here's the tension. The tension is the reason why he's delaying, or it seems like he seems to be slow, is the fact that he's trying to let patience have his perfect work in your life. His faith was enough to get him to Jesus and, and to trust him for healing his daughter. But what Jesus is trying to do is deepen a level of faith because even with this delay or seeming to be a delay, what it should be happening is that Jairus' faith should be stirred up because this woman just got healed on his way to his house. So when we see other people's testimonies, that should build up our faith for what we're expecting God for. Because we overcome by the blood of the land and each other's time the word of our testimony. So just seeing this woman who was struggling for 12 years and seeing my daughter who's on the deathbed and she's 12 years old, then there must be a connection here because I know God about to move like never before. So that delay run is doing is that patience is building up in me a perseverance. It's building up in me a certain trust and faith that I need to have so that when I do get done this trial, that I will be lacking nothing. He did not want one ounce of Jairus to lack in anything. So he delays or he seemingly delays. And I keep saying that because in God's mind, he's never late. In the mind of God, God is never late. In your mind, you believe he's late. God doesn't see himself as late. God always believes and God knows that when he shows, he always is on time. What you see as a delay is in what God is trying to, uh, trying to work in you. But in God's mind, God is not going to move on anything until patience then had is perfect work. You pray for patience and then all of a sudden you're wondering why are you in, pa in situations where you got to be patient? Because you prayed for it. And even if you say, oh, Pastor B, I ain't going to pray for it. You're still going to go through it. You can't escape. The working of the Holy Spirit in your life. You got to let it have its perfect work. You got to allow yourself to know that while you do, your need is urgent. And God knows your need is urgent, but he also knows that I'm going to use this as a lesson. I'm going to use this as a moment to teach you about faith. I'm going to use this in a moment to bring your faith and tighten it to another level. And I'm going to let you face the tension of all of it. When you feel like you're being delayed, your anxiety is through the roof. You could imagine Jairus is like, man, any minute, minute, if he don't come on, man, my daughter about to die. I don't know. If he don't come through, I don't know. I might lose my business. I don't know if he if he don't do any if he don't do that. My marriage could go down. I don't. I just don't know. I, I don't know. I'm I'm praying for the healing of, and being delivered from this cancer, but it's just like it's progressing in stages. I, I just if he don't move, I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. And he and your your mind is racing and racing and racing because you have an urgent need, and Jesus seems like he is delaying. You know what I mean? 
And then what doesn't help is number two. Can I keep on showing the text to you? Point number two is this. The tension behind the miracle lies in maintaining faith when my environment is pushing me towards doubt. What are you talking about, Pastor? If you look into the text here, when you go down to verses, when you get down to verse 36, and if we go back to Mark chapter 5, verse 36, go back a little further, 35, let's do 35, right? While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house said, your daughter dead. That's not what it said. It's improper grammar, but it's, it's good theology. <laughs> Amen. Why trouble the teacher any further? You might as well stop. People ask you, why, why are you still need him to come? Why are you still are asking God and praying on this situation? It's over. Your daughter dead. He took too long. He took too long. It's over. No need to trouble him any further. Then not only that, y'all, it, it gets even worse than that. It gets even worse when we get to verse 40. When we go to verse 40. No, let, oh, oh, okay, then let's go to verse 39, and then I'll go to verse 40. Here we go. And when he came and he said, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. Here go verse, 30, uh, here go verse 40. And they ridiculed him. They talk about Jesus. When he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him and entered. The child was lying where the child was lying. What am I trying to tell you? That there were professional mourners there mourning over the fact that his daughter didn't die. They don't care that the person died. They paid to professionally mourn and, and, and cry like, oh, Jesus, take her, Lord. I just, Jesus, just a job. That's what they're doing. They're paid mourners. That's what they used to do back then. I, that, I'm still troubled by that. I don't understand why are we paying people to cry over the loss. That is weird. It doesn't make sense, but that was their culture at the time. I don't know why I'm hot. I'm already sad. Why are you coming in and making it even worse? You're deepening my grief. It's almost back then in their culture, they wanted you to feel the death. They want you to feel it in your soul. I already do feel it in my soul. Why do I need you here? Just going, oh, she done dead, Lord. She done, she gone. She gone. I know she gone. Why are you here? Then not only that, when Jesus said, oh, she just sleep. They said, they started ridiculing him. The Bible says in other versions that they were mocking him. What does that got to do with you? It's because if you see your environment mocking and ridiculing what you have believed in, that will start sowing seeds of doubt in your own heart. When you are in an environment that is not full of faith, what will, bring, what will happen is that environment will pull down your faith and bring them at the level where they are. Because there's people in your environment that don't believe like you believe. There's people in your environment that don't have the faith that you have. There's people in your environment that don't see how God has already worked in your life before, even with this situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's also people in the environment who don't like the fact that you even went to Jesus in the first place because of how they feel about him. You are a religious leader in a synagogue and you went up to him. How dare you go up to him? And that's why your daughter was dead. He's hearing all of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's facing the tension of how people in his environment is dogging him. They're dogging Jesus right in front of them because of what they feel towards him. How are you going to say that she just sleep? And we saw her take her last breath. He crazy. And you crazy for bringing him in here. Why are you going to tell me to continue to pray? Why are you continuing to pray when that just happened? You got divorced, but there's life after it. You don't understand what I'm doing here. You, you don't understand my faith. And so people who don't understand, they're easy to ridicule things that they don't have no experience with. And because you have experience with Jesus, you can't let nobody or nothing take you out of what you know about your God. 
because even in my headache and my trouble and in my pain the Bible says he's near to the brokenhearted are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you it is the tension behind the miracle, ladies and gentlemen, when you have to begin. And what Jesus does is what he does is separated them. Put them out. Because he knows that that's not good for him to hear right now. He don't need to hear all of this. He's already in grief and pain. His faith didn't allow me to get here this far. And I need to clear every joker out who don't got the same level of faith. Because guess what? They want to listen. They got put out of seeing and experiencing what Jesus already knew all along. Yes, sir, yes, sir. She was asleep. Sleep. Sleep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. I would tabernacle there, but I could lose the service. Because the reality of the matter is, well, especially for a believer, all you see in that casket is someone who just sleep. They not there. Hallelujah. Their spirit is yet alive and well in another realm. And all I need to do is call that spirit back down to this body. Because that spirit ain't going nowhere. It's just yet alive. And I'm calling that spirit back to that body. So get up. Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, see that's the hope of the believer. The hope of the believer, ladies and gentlemen, is guess what? All you see is something that's an empty shell. My spirit is alive and well. And guess what? If God want to raise up a body, he'll bring that spirit right back down and come on up. If he wants to. Yes, if he wants to. I'm not saying it happens every time. Because all of us didn't pray for somebody and you know they passed anyway. You get what I'm saying? And you got to wrestle with that tension of grief. And people get mad at Jesus when you don't understand his sovereignty. There's a deeper plan behind everything. You guys got to be open to see it. Life and ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call life. This is the perseverance of this thing, this race, this marathon called life. And so, yes, there's times when he does heal. There's other times when he does heal in another way. Either way, the person got healed. It's just wanting to be healed in the way that you can still see them. But that don't mean that they're not healed on the other side. And that doesn't take away from the grief that you feel, but it does give you a little joy that I know that is never a goodbye. It's always a see you later because I'm in Christ. And I heard the voice. I got to stop because the reality is, is that you, you don't see why we celebrate like we celebrate is because it's never a goodbye. I'm going to see you later. And when I live in righteousness, you can't crown them until I get there. You can't do any of that stuff. We're going to do it together. Here we go. First Thessalonians 5 verse 11. Here it reads, it says, so encourage each other, build each other up just as you already doing here's the problem you're not around like-minded spirits in christ that can build you up encourage you when you're when when we're all when when you're going through when you're going through you gotta have strong people around you you can't be the only strong person in your group because you will have nobody to lean on you can't lean on, uh, let me tell you something. Well, I do got friends, pastor. Well, if you got people who are not in Christ, they're going to give you advice and counsel that is far away from God. So you didn't have nobody. You got to get around people who can also speak the word to you and pray for you. There's some times where I know who I can call. I don't need to say nothing. They just pray. I can just get around and just talk it, out. talk it out, bring my cares, and I know that they are a vault, so I know they ain't going to say nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people, you're around people who are not vaults, yeah. meaning that what they do is they, they, they don't care about locking those secrets and taking it to death. Uh, There's some people you got to have as friends that we taking each other down to the grave. It's you and me. I'm a vault until the very end. Locked, sealed, and delivered. You don't say nothing, I don't say nothing. We going down in the grave together. I'm talking about on things that are, you know, that are right. Not stuff that you know you a sinner. Let me clear that on up. Let me clarify it.
If you're doing wrong, let me, I ain't vaulting that, brother. Uh, you know, <laughs> we can't both go to jail. <laughs> you're laughing, I'm serious. <laughs> Jairus, ladies and gentlemen, they're laughing, they're ridiculing, they're doing all of that, and, and Jesus knows what to do. He removes them out of it. Why does he move them? Because it is going to mess up where they are. It's going to mess up where Jairus, he's going to start sinking that in. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're going through what you're going through, you can start, you can either, your faith will either rise or you will seek, sink in your depression. Your faith will either rise or you will sink in your anxiety. Your faith will either rise or what will happen is that you will stay depleted. Instead of doing what Pastor OG said on Sunday, last Sunday, letting because of the joy ahead. You can stay and think that your moment of grief is going to last forever or that joy is going, is that, but joy is on the other side of it. That's what kept Jesus going. But guess what? But if your environment is telling you, nah, you might as well smoke your problems away. Just make your, take yourself out of it for a moment. And guess what? When you get off of that high, you still going to feel a particular way. <laughs> it ain't not enough weed you can smoke. It ain't enough sex you can have. It's not enough alcohol you can drink. It's none of that that can wash any of your problems away. Besides the old hymn of the church to say, I must tell Jesus all of my problems. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my despair, he promised he'll help me. He ever cares for his own. The reality of the matter is, is that we got to come to whom we know that can fix the problem. You trying to go to something that's going to fix your flesh. Your flesh ain't going to, it's like it's going to be pleased for a moment. You got a deeper problem. Your spirit is low. You see, the problem is we think that we go to fleshly things thinking that's going to solve a spiritual matter. <laughs> that's not going to solve your spiritual problem. Oh, it ain't going to solve it because you're trying to figure out your flesh is going to keep gravitating to the same thing because that's what's gratifying it. But it's not gratifying your problem. It's not rectifying your issue. Your issue is still there because it's a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual problem. You're trying to fix your spiritual need with fleshly matters. You don't. You can't do it. It don't work that way because you'll continually feel empty. And if you're in an environment that tells you, if you're in an environment that tells you to do that, guess what? You'll feel just as empty as them. Because what I've come to find out is that some people love you even more when they feel like finally, you little goody two shoe, Jesus trusting person is in the same shoes as I am. I'm going to be honest, there's some people, ladies and gentlemen, who like the fact of when you're going through. Because finally, we can both agree on something. Finally, I can feel like I'm in the shoes to give advice. And if you got a person like that now, you better run. You better put them out like Jesus did. Why? Because they're not good for the soul. I got to be around people, ladies and gentlemen, that can uplift me, that can build my spirit up, that both of us can start praying and all of a sudden where there's two or three gathered in the midst, there Jesus is right there. Lastly, as I come to a close, and you still keep your brunch plan, <laughs> Point number three. The tension behind every miracle lies in whether I will have faith in what God declares possible versus what circumstances seem to allow. I told you in the beginning, he believed that Jesus could heal his daughter if she was still alive. Here's where the tension, the verb, using it as the verb again, here's where it is. Can I show you yet again? Tension means to tighten to a desired or appropriate degree. Here's where it is. What circumstances seem to allow 
is that his daughter is dead. Will he still believe when it seems like what he came to God for has lost? What do you do, ladies and gentlemen, when you feel like life has threw you a, has threw you a blow and you prayed for it not, but yet it still came? What do you do that when your worst case scenario happened, it happens? The worst case scenario that J.R. has had is worst case is that if we don't get there in time, my daughter's going to die. And Jesus purposely lingered. That's the thing, because the other tension that you don't talk about that you have running in your mind, does he even care in the first place? Because if he really cared, he would stop talking to her and get to me. How many of y'all can be honest like Pastor be a little selfish? Every hand should be in the room. If your hand is not lifted up, you a liar and the truth is not in you. I put all my legs up and if I could, everything. Because when it comes down to your need, I know you God and you are. First of all, you are not present. All right. So I know you can be everywhere at one time. But listen, I need a little personal intention. Because I'm thinking about throwing all of this away. See, people talk about the part of faith when everything goes your way. When everything, the circumstances are all favorable. What do you do, ladies and gentlemen, when it's no longer favorable and they tell you, hey, your daughter didn't die. No longer, no need to trouble him anymore. Your worst case scenario has happened. And Jesus hears this. Jesus hears it. And in verse 36 of Mark chapter 5. Here's what happens. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Only believe. Here's the tension, ladies and gentlemen. Why would he tell me to only believe and my daughter is dead? What does he plan to do? (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this is before even the resurrection of Lazarus. No president has been set. How is this going to even happen? My daughter is dead now. But yet, I love what J.R. is dead. He kept walking with him to the house. Ah, even though if you don't fully believe it all the way through, he just kept walking with him. Because maybe he knows something I don't know. I wish you would walk the text with me and put yourself in those shoes because there's sometimes in my own personal life I didn't see how he was going to come because it looked like the door didn't close it looked like the opportunity but he said hey don't be afraid just keep on walking with me don't be afraid just only only look at somebody say only believe only ah just only believe look 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 look, you don't understand here's the tension will you have the faith to believe for what you don't see Uh, that's what I like about J.R.S. he heard that and that was enough to just keep him walking hallelujah let me tell you something it takes just a little word of hearing the faith just a little enough of faith to hear to say maybe now my hope is not all lost maybe maybe there's not hope all lost maybe there's something on the other side of this and I'm just gonna keep walking with him I'm just gonna keep walking with him my heart is heavy I'm feeling grieved, but I'm just going to keep walking. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, keep walking. Just keep walking with them. Don't throw it away. Don't throw your hope away. Don't throw your confidence away in Jesus. Hallelujah. But we have a hope that's an anchor unto the soul. Hey, don't let your anchor get thrown out now. But hold steady. Stand firm. Hallelujah. You just got to keep walking. Hallelujah. As the Bible said, the just shall live by faith. I heard the scripture say we walk by faith and not by sight. Hey, don't be afraid. Don't let fear grieve. Don't let fear grip your heart now. Just believe. Hallelujah. Well, what am I believing? I'm believing him. I'm just walking with him. I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm not into the specifics. I'm just into who the one who can make it happen. 
<laughs> oh, man. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I like what James R. Edwards said. He said, the challenge of faith before Jairus and for everyone who meets Jesus is whether to believe only in what circumstances allow or in what God declares possible. John 11, verse 40, and I'm coming to an end. Praise your name. Are you getting something out of this? Jesus responded, did not tell you that if you would see God, did not tell you you would see God's glory if you believed. Martha had a same situation. We called you three days earlier. If you were here, my brother wouldn't have died if you got here sooner. We called you. We told everybody, your disciples, to come get you. And we heard that they told you and you did nothing. Jesus said, don't you know I am the resurrection? Well, I know I am. I know you the resurrection. You know, at the end of the day, no, 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 no. You thinking in the last day he the resurrection. No, 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 no. I am the resurrection. If you would believe right now, you would see the glory of the Lord. What am I telling tell you today that if you would just believe right now, you would see the glory of the Lord. You keep going back and forth and all he's asking, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you have the faith to believe now? Well, I know, Lord, you're going to raise him up at the last day. I didn't ask for that. I said, did not tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jairus walked with him because it was those words that was just enough that Jairus needed to hear at the time. And when all them people were trying to ridicule, he, Jesus couldn't let, allow, allow the little seed that made Jairus keep going to be taken from him. See, when you hear this word today, the enemy's going to try to take the seed of the word and snatch it out. The little bit that you needed to keep on moving. The little bit that you needed to keep on walking. And so you can't allow the enemy to snatch that seed out of you because that's just enough of what you needed to hear to change your mind. Hallelujah. So if you came in here heavy this morning, God has given you this word today to say, hey, face the tension and face the tension and go through it like Jairus. Because at the end of the day, or either you're going to believe him or you're going to be let there and not see the glory of God. Hallelujah. And so Jairus, ladies and gentlemen, he walks with him. He comes into the room. Jesus clears everybody out. Jesus speaks to her in Aramaic and tells her in, in better words, hey, little girl, get up. Hallelujah. You've been asleep, but I need you to get up. Hey, what happens, ladies and gentlemen, that what you saw was dormant and all of a sudden awakens because of the word of the Lord. Get up. She just sleep. Get up. Hallelujah. And because of the word, what happened is that body responded to the word of the Lord over that person's life. And, and you know, I was just talking, to, I was talking last Sunday and I was asking, ladies and gentlemen, I was asking about Lasagna's granddaughter uh, who's still in the hospital or whatever like that. And I was just saying that I was seeing this text and that little girl kept coming in my mind. And that little girl kept on my mind because her lungs ain't fully developed yet. And then and she might get out, but the but 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 you know, they didn't give her no specific date, and so I said to myself, "Well, Lord, if that word go to her, you can meet her where she is right there, and just tell that lung, hey lung, I need you to fully develop now. I need you to get up, Hallelujah! I need you to fully grow. I got purpose over that girl life. I got a destiny over that girl life. I need you to get up." <laughs> Whoa, I feel your glory now, Jesus. Hey, I feel like preaching this thing like I feel it, but, but the reality of the matter, there's some things that you need to send the word to and just say, hey, get up, 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 get up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. I don't see it in front of me right now, but I believe that love can fully develop. <laughs> I don't see how the money gonna hit my account, but I just believe it's gonna hit there. I just believe. I, I, I don't know. I, it seemed like it, it seemed like they signed the contract over there, but I, I just, I just, I just, I just believe. I just anything could happen. Jesus said, "With man, this is impossible. Well, with God, all things are possible to him that believe." <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dare you look at somebody you just got to believe. Hallelujah. I need you to do what the scripture says. Stand still. Hey. I stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Hey. The enemies you've seen today. you will see no longer. Say yes. I'm just gonna be still hallelujah hallelujah I'm gonna be still and know that he is God he's gonna be lifted up among the heathen hey, they're gonna know that there's a God hallelujah 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 what do you do church in the tension what you do church is you keep hope alive what do you do in the tension where it feels like all the weight is on your back? Just give it over to Jesus. Hallelujah, all that I have, all that I be, I give it over to you. Hallelujah, being anxious for nothing, but with everything through much prayer and supplication, making my request made known and the peace. Hey, hey, wait on the Lord. And be of good courage. He will strengthen thine heart. Ooh. Hallelujah. 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 Until your spirit get better. Hey. No, oh my God, until your spirit get on up. Till your spirit catches up to what the Lord has said. You gotta speak those things as known as they're not, as they are. Hallelujah. You stop letting life punk you out. You stop letting life get the best of you. You got a weapon and a secret weapon that's beyond what this life got to throw at you. You got the Holy Spirit on your side. The best advocator you could ever have. The best confidant you could ever have. Hallelujah, the best teacher you could ever have. And not only you, but you got the Son of God. Hallelujah, make an intercession for you. Why you let life punk you out? Why you let life get the best of you? You tell life that I got a God that even made this. Hear you be not dismayed for whatever be time. God will take care of me beneath his wings. The love of God. Yes. You wrestle with the tension. <laughs> what do I do when it looked like what I came to him for initially did not happen and he decided to do it another way? Is not God still an answer or a prayer? Here's, can I show you this? Jairus could still be mad that he didn't come urgently on the initial, or he could be glad that he came and his daughter still got healed. And you know what I come to find with people sometimes is they rejoice, they still are mad over the fact that he didn't come as urgently as they needed. 
Why are you so caught up on when, when it still happened? Some people rejoice, well, God, I'm glad you did it, but you could have came earlier. Why you still got the butt on your answer? He came, didn't he? Don't matter when. Because we only see the, we only say it's a delay because in our minds it seems delayed. But there is nothing that is delayed in the eyes of God. How do I know this? Because when the ram needed to come and be in the eyesight of Abraham, God revealed it in his time. What am I trying to tell you? Your provision is hanging there, but God don't open your eyes to see it until he's ready to reveal it to you. <laughs> there is nothing you and I, every blessing that you have is not so, oh, it came out of nowhere. It was already pre-planned. God ain't doing nothing on the spot in your life. God has made his mind up about you even before you were born. Your decisions decide if you're going to see it at the time and that you're going to see it. Your choices decide if you're going to see it. You know what's the difference between most people is their decisions lead them to do different things. And if Jairus would have listened to them, would that girl have been healed? Would he have kept going to the house of Jesus? I mean, would he have kept, would, would he have allowed Jesus to keep coming with him to his house? Or would he allow his disappointment to say, man, get away from me. I should have listened to everybody else who didn't like you in the first place. You know why people walk away from the faith? It's because the Christian faith challenges you with the tension of what you believe. And it's only for those who can persevere to the end. <laughs> there waits for me a crown when all it is is done when the dust settles there waits for me on the other side of this tension uh, called life hallelujah I'm going to tell God I dealt with the tension now I'm expecting to give me what you said you would give me hallelujah <laughs> I feel the glory of the Lord. Why don't you worship God right where you are? Because I don't know about, I don't know who I'm talking to in this room. You needed to hear that God cares. You needed to hear tonight, this morning, that you got to wrestle with the tension. But you're going to be all right. Inflation is hitting all of us, y'all. Trust me, it, it looks like it's getting worse, too. All of it. I shouldn't be paying this money for this much money on this stuff. But guess what? That ain't going to stop what God's going to do in your life. No, no, no. I said he'll keep the righteous. You know how you defeat the enemy that even in your pain, you keep walking. Hallelujah. Even when people are shaming you, you because of what you believe, you just keep on going. I don't care. I'm tuning you out. Because I know in my Savior, my Redeemer lives. When Job and his friends tried to say, hey, disgrace his name, man. Just call him and curse him because all of this stuff he allowing to happen to you. He just, nah, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I don't understand. In my hurt, in my pain, you're still God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still the mighty God. You change if not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. God, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be saying to yourself right now, what am I going to do? God knows. God knows. God knows. And he cares. In this moment right now, I need you to just give whatever you want to Jesus. Give it to him right here.
Get it right here. Closed mouths don't get fed. Open your mouth in this moment. We're getting out of here. Our service is getting done. My father knows what you're going through. My father knows, and he's reaching out to you. There's no need to run from him. He loves you so. So come to him. Because my father, he knows. Listen, I need to do this. Do this is two people. I need to do this, brother. Right here in the the, the polo, the court rows. I was sitting. I was just sitting right here, and the Holy Spirit dropped on my heart. He said, "Encourage him in the Lord. Yes. Encourage. I just want to encourage you today. I want you to know there's nothing that you've been doing that God has not seen. There's nothing that you're doing in secret that God has not seen." Lord want me to tell you today that he sees you and he's not forsaking you and he sees that you're trying and that's all he wants and he said because of that if he fully if he fully yields the Lord said to me to tell you today you will change a whole trajectory of all the men in your family. And he said, I will bless the very things that I've put in your hands to do. Your seed will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. You will be mighty in the land. And I have heard this too. Don't allow influences to try to talk you out putting your faith in almighty God and your trust in him because as I stand here I don't lie as I stand here today the Lord is speaking to me heavily concerning you this is a matter for your generation and your seed to do something different to put a different stamp on your last name I decree and declare that as you give your life to God in a greater way, you will see what God will do in your lifeline, in your bloodline, and with your last name. He will make it great in the name of Jesus Christ. So don't lean to the left nor to the right, but keep your eyes focused. Don't come up off the gas. Keep it going. God sees and God knows and he knows those hidden troubles and struggles and stuff like that and God says listen don't even worry about that because guess what as you continue to yield I know it may get hard before it get better but just know it's going to get better it's going to get better you're going to see the hand of God like never before but my encouragement to you is don't let up don't let off that don't allow you I'm telling you I hear this so heavy don't allow the influences of others to take you off the course your mindset is bigger than what people can see you're bigger than what you even see in your own self the hand of the Lord is upon you and he's been with you and on you even when you were younger there were different things that would have tried to arise and put you on a different course but for some odd reason, God kept on keeping you. Because your purpose is bigger. It's bigger. The hand of the Lord is upon your life. So don't allow influences to take you away from you. In the name of Jesus. Because I'm telling you, God's going to do great things with your last name. And your son. Because you will be the difference maker. You will be the difference. You will be the difference. I keep saying this because something will trigger in your heart. 
you gonna be the difference. It's you. The Lord said, I've tried it with everybody else, but they rejected the call. He said, don't reject it. Don't you reject it. Mom, I say to you too, the flavor of the Lord is upon you. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. God says that you got great ideas too. Ideas and stuff like that. You've been, you've been talking and stuff like that and trying to figure out how we're going to put this together, this plan, you know. Just had this newborn, but I still can't take it away. It's still coming to me. Why? Because the Lord sent you here today. So I don't know about this church. We're just going to try it out today. And y'all came because the Lord wanted you to know, I see you, I hear you, and I haven't forgotten about you. In the name of Jesus. And God's going to strengthen your health, and you're going to be around. And you're going to see the hand of God. Live long life. He will satisfy you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come here, brother. What's up, shorty? What's good, bro? Oh, good, man. Bro, I need to pray for you. Mommy, pray for you. I wanted to pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta stand in front of nobody I was gonna talk to you. But I want me to tell you, man, I mean, God's real, yo. Be real, man. But He wants to reveal Himself in a real way to you, man. In a real way. Not in a way that you, 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 you know, we have in the church sometimes. Matter of fact, your life has been spared a couple times. There's a reason behind that. More than you have. And that's what I'm here to tell you. Because <laughs> listen here, man. God will, His mercy has been with you. And you don't even see it all the time. There was things that dangerous that were presented in places and had your name up should have took your life but somehow God put a shield on you and I want you to know this that God's mercy he's really merciful but sometimes our choices can get us caught up and Lord, I want me to tell you today because you hear this word I say make a different choice make a different decision because what I will do is I'm going to use your testimony it's going to help set other men who are like you free. And then God will do this for you. He will start opening and illuminating to you different plans, ideas. In the areas of your job and work and all of that stuff like that. And what has been seeming to be hard at times, God will make certain things ease. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's not going to be without struggle. You know what I'm saying? There's still an ease even when you feel like things are struggling. I want you to know that. Because God still gives you a peace. And that's going to, again, the same word that I heard for him, the reason why I needed to do it for you, is because it influences to you. Change who you, got, who you give ear to. Change who you're giving your ear, who you allow pour into your spirit. Because not everybody who pours into your spirit means well for you. They don't mean all well. They don't have all good intentions. But there was one particular individual who you did have given your ear to. And he's really been a real good a ear, an influence to you. You know who this person is. And he's one of the most strongest influences out of everybody else. Because his, his wisdom is more christ nature than what the other people's wisdom are. I hear him. I'm making sense. I'm making sense. I'm not lying. Okay. <laughs> okay. But God said today, that you give him your life. Give him your life. And trust him. Put yourself in your whole heart in him. You got questions, they'll be answered along the way. He won't leave you ignorant. All right? So I pray over you today. May God's peace, may his favor, may his blessing be upon you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, may you be filled with the spirit. May you
you receive the Father into your heart today. In the name of Jesus, amen. God praise God for these words. If you're not saved, I give you an opportunity to know Jesus. I, I give you an opportunity to know him today. Listen, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, I want you to give your life to him today. Don't you leave out of here and you don't know him. Today is your day of salvation. If you harden not your heart. In Jesus' name. He died that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And all you got to do is believe and you are saved. All you got to do is believe, put your faith in him that he died, he was buried, and rose again, and that your sins were forgiven because of his death, his resurrection. If you want to rededicate your life back to Christ, I want you to meet me down at this altar. You can do that as well. Rededicate. It's time to come back home today. I'm going fishing for souls. Ask somebody next to you, say, are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with him? If you're not, I'll walk down here with you. It's better to know him than to leave and don't know him when the opportunity has been given. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. If you need a church home and you're looking for a church home, I want you to join me here. Not alone, let another day go by. Make this your church home. I would love to be your pastor. I would love to cover you like never before. Let's do life together in Jesus' name. So if those of you, if you're one of the three, and you want to give your life to Christ, you want to rededicate your life, or you're looking for a church home, walk down to this altar right here, and let's pray together. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come as you are. Come as you are. Those of you watching online, text that number right now in Jesus name hallelujah if you're watching online repeat this prayer after me say Lord Jesus come into my heart I acknowledge I'm a sinner in need of a savior and I want to give you my life today I acknowledge you died that you were buried and that you rose again and ascended to the right hand of the father just for me today I'm giving you my life in Jesus name said that prayer text that number that's on the screen if you said that prayer here our pastors are right here to meet you right where you are and tell you the next steps of your salvation amen amen if you're glad come on put those hands together it's offering time